Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a video for you called Destiny, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is a continuing series on my channel where I kind of do a critical overview of a game before it comes out because I get the luxury of playing these games before it comes out, alpha, beta, private testing, whatever. And a lot of people want to know the bad things that I have to say about it as well as the good things so you can make an informed purchasing decision. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the gameplay is not mine. This is from J-Hub on Xbox One. I'm traveling in Europe right now. When you're watching this video, I'm actually in Germany at Gamescom, so I was not able to be at home to record, but J-Hub gave me the gameplay, so big shout out to him. Linked his channel down there in the description. Be sure to check him out. Let's start off with the good things about Destiny. First up, it is 1080p. It is real, true, proper, no BS 1080p. A lot of the more, uh, we'll say, modern or next-gen or whatever, the new games that are coming out, they're advertised as being 1080p or on a 1080p console, but really they're 720p, 900p, 980p, and they're scaled up to 1080p, which kind of gives you some jaggies and some weird resolution issues. However, this game is a natural 1080p as far as I know, though the rumor is it may be a slightly lesser than that on Xbox One. I know PS4 is 1080p. Speaking of which, another good thing, this game finally gets some love for PlayStation 4. This is a mega title, a major US title for PS4, and I know that my channel is largely Xbox fans, and you guys probably don't like that, but Xbox gets the best of the best of North America, of shooters, uh, well, you know, this is an Activision game, so a lot of their stuff as well. It's finally good that the PlayStation 4 has something. It is, of course, it's going to be on all consoles, which is another one of my good things. It's going to be on uh, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, so all four of the major consoles. But it's nice that the PlayStation 4 gets the DLC first, that they're finally getting some right, proper love from a gaming studio. Another good thing is I believe this game has good graphics. Now, by good graphics, I don't mean the most technically advanced. I don't mean they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen with particle and filters and whatever because we've hit the point with our graphical technology where none of that matters. It's all about great aesthetics and having graphics good enough to create the artistic aesthetics that you like and that's exactly what Destiny has. It is, you know, a little bit cartoony in a way. It's not a hyper-realistic game, but it's, it's largely realistic and it looks really good in its own art and its own style and what it does. Speaking of that, it has a high degree of customization for your character, which is a cool thing. It's something that you don't see in shooters or a whole lot of, uh, you know, these kind of games very often. It's, it's not as good as the Skyrim one, but it is very strong. I can make my character look like anything I want. I can look like me, or I can look like something that's totally different. Very good thing. Another thing it has a high degree of customization with is your skill progression and choices. Once you choose your one of three main classes, and I know that seems limited, but we're going to get to why it's limited in a little bit, you can then level them up how you fit or want to. You can use uh, different pieces of armor, different weapons, uh, different abilities, and then you have several different subclasses inside that main class, each of which will almost completely transform your class into something else. So you have a great degree of options and choices on how you want to play this game, while at the same time there is good counterplay between these skills in multiplayer. They don't uh, over the, you know, one is not clearly overpowered and better than the other. And it, it, it's kind of funny when I talk to people about multiplayer, if they're playing the Hunter, they'll be like, man, that Titan is garbage. He's so OP. And when they play the Titan, they'll be like, oh man, the Hunter is, you know, it's ridiculous. Or, you know, they'll say the Warlock is ridiculous. Everybody says the other classes that aren't them are ridiculous. And then the other classes would obviously say they're ridiculous. That's usually a good idea, uh, a good indication of good game balance. Next up, the game was smart enough to scale multiplayer weapons for fairness. When you load into a multiplayer get match, even if you have the best, highest damage, most awesome gun in the game, almost cursed there, I try not to do that in my videos, what the game will do is it will take an average of all of the gun stats, all of the damages, and kind of smooth them out so that you're all dealing equal amounts of damage, not equal amounts of damage to each other, that's wrong, but it kind of it kind of uh, curves it. So if, you, if a max level player joins a whole lot, like a lobby with like level 1s and 2s or whatever, it's going to kind of curve them out so that it's more balanced. Uh, one other good thing about, well, that's actually a bad thing. We'll move on. <laughs> Got a little bit ahead of myself right there. Uh, headshots are greatly rewarded in multiplayer. It's been a long time since we've had an FPS that really rewarded headshots quite like Destiny, so that's a good thing. The multiplayer and single player tie in well, and the items carry over. I don't even think I mentioned it in the beginning because I got ahead of myself talking about other stuff, but the gameplay that you're seeing right now from J-Hub, shout out to him again, is a single player uh, explore mission. It's part of the campaign story mission, but the cool thing about the game 
game is that what you do in single player affects what you do in multiplayer, and what you do in multiplayer affects what you do in single player. All of the, uh, let's say, achievements, the score, the currency, the weapons, the things that you get, the uh, sort of reputation that you have, they all carry over back and forth. You can do both, or you can just do one or the other, and if you want to jump back, it won't kind of like penalize you because you can take all your stuff over. The single player is very story and lore rich, which is something I kind of like. It has an overt outward story. There is a plan, there is a plot for you to follow. But uh, it's not super, super complex, but if you want it to be, there's more that you can explore, more that you can read about, more that you can kind of get between the lines and really get a lot of story out of it if that's what you want. The single player levels are designed to be highly explorable, which is good. If you want to go check out a cave or a random dungeon or a crashed airplane or whatever, there's usually stuff in there. I would call it treasure, or you could call it loot or discoveries or whatever. There's crazy high level monsters, there's new enemies to fight. You can actually discover new campaigns and story missions and little side missions and stuff while exploring the single player levels, which is pretty cool. And the single player levels are very large, definitely in size. They're massive, massive levels in size. They're just completely huge. In number, that's a maybe. We're going to talk about the number of single player levels more in the bad section. The always on social element is immersive, and as a very social gamer, as an online gamer, I like that. It's kind of cool that when I go shop, I'm in a market with other people, obviously multiplayer, or when I do campaign, people can hop in and out of my mission if they want to, or I can join in and help somebody on their mission, and it's because you're supposed to kind your skills are supposed to complement each other. You're supposed to really work as a team, which is why you have the fire team thing going on. And and you'll have one warlock, one hunter, one uh, titan, and they do different things, and they can defeat different enemies better. And, and I think that's kind of cool. Also, just a small thing that stood out that I like that I would put in the good session section is they have dynamic weather maps. Uh, this is more true for multiplayer than single player, but you can play a map at morning, afternoon, and evening, in rain, in snow, in fog, in uh, all sorts of different strange weather conditions, and that, that's only on the ones that we really understand. I think there's some crazier ones coming once the full game comes out. So even though you're playing the same single player map, it's not necessarily exactly the same every time. Wow, I spent about six minutes talking about the good stuff about Destiny. Let's talk about the bad stuff, because you can't be overly positive. It's just not, that's not really how this works. The game definitely has flaws, and we're going to talk about some bad, and then move into some of the very unfortunate ugly. First up in the bad section is that the old consoles probably won't look nearly as good as what you're seeing here, or anything that you've seen so far. Nobody thus far has seen gameplay from the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360. There's almost no way in hell they're going to be 10 1080p unless it's like five frames per second and they just don't have the same graphical capabilities they just will not look as good on the old consoles again there's you know some art style and some aesthetics that maybe it won't be so bad but i'm not expecting them to be a pretty game on the old consoles speaking of consoles we haven't talked about pc yet because as of now, as of as far as I'm aware, there's no Destiny on PC. There is the potential for a future PC Destiny. There is like a web portal where you can sign in and manage some stuff from your PC or your mobile, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, if you're a PC gamer, you're not going to be able to play Destiny, and that just kind of sucks that it's, it's supposed to be this massive game and we're excluding the PC community. I don't really like that very much. The amount of skill choices in both single player and multiplayer and how you build your uh, classes, while there's a great degree of choice and I like that, they can kind of be overwhelming. It's not very clear or obvious what everything does or how it works or what's good and what's bad or exactly what counters what, and that, that, that is some degree the skill that you have to play the game, that you need to learn it and kind of figure it out. But it is kind of overwhelming and it is easy to experiment and screw up, so you could definitely go wrong. There are also some balance issues, because the more things you have, the harder it is to do an overall balance. The scaling of multiplayer guns, well, while cool and keeps it kind of fair, makes me kind of sad because it also kind of negates the point of grinding really hard in single player or doing crazy challenges to get my awesome guns when they're really only going to differ in intangibles. They're not going to do that much more damage. They're not going to shoot that much faster. They just have intangibles like, oh, this one will deal elemental damage and this one has lower recoil or it reloads a little bit faster. That's not really why I spent an hour doing that really hard single player mission so that I can reload faster. So that kind of bums me out a little bit, but I understand while it's there. Controls are not as smooth as what I liked. I, I think they're kind of clunky. And when I say kind of, kind of clunky, I don't mean they're terrible, I don't mean they're hella bad, I don't mean they're the most clunky thing I've ever seen, because 
goodness gracious, I've seen a lot worse. But they're not as good as what I was really hoping for. And one of the things that really threw me off is that you can't turn while you sprint. Like, when I sprint, it kind of really locks down my ability to strafe. And it also locks down my uh, look sensitivity. Like, it changes the sensitivity. So if I'm sprinting and I want to turn to look left, I literally just can't do that because my sensitivity is different. And what they try to do is limit it where you can't do, like, Call of Duty and, like, do some weird, like, you kind of turn around around the corner, but it just, as a player of that, it feels really weird. There are fairly long loading times on the new consoles. Uh, just generally speaking, I don't think I've played too many maps that loaded quickly, unless that was the last map I just played and it was already in the system's cache or preloaded or whatever. When I load up something new, it takes a long time to load, like a minute, two minutes, three minutes sometimes. I mean, it's loading up big maps, which is cool and understand you got to wait for graphics and quality and all, but it's not a fast hop in and play game. Uh, a criticism of the single player maps is that they're it's kind of boring to replay the same ones over and over and over again. They did this Halo style where you'll do one mission on the map and it'll kind of cut off once you get about a quarter of the way into the map. And when you do the next mission, you respawn in and you have to walk that whole distance again and then replay some more stuff in a different part of the map or you'll spawn in and head the other way. And the single player maps, your starting point's usually the same. And it's just, you're like unlocking different sections of the map, but it still feels like Halo, where they tell you to go to one side and then come back across the other side with new enemies. That doesn't make it a new or unique experience. You're just wasting my time walking back and forth. Uh, it is a heavily item slash loot based game. Some people love this. Some people play Borderlands. They play World of Warcraft. They absolutely eat this up. I'm going to actually move it toward a little bit of the bad side. I'm not as big on the item slash loot based games as a lot of other people. I'd really just kind of like to, um, I, that my skills would carry me more than my items, and it is it is very kind of grindy, and I get kind of addicted to that sort of thing, like, oh, I gotta get my plus 20 armor of fire, or whatever, not really my kind of deal. And another bad is that not everyone likes being online. While the always on social element is cool for me, I totally understand when you get bad teammates or when you just want to play by yourself. That's not going to be something that you're able to do in Destiny. I mean, you can hop on into weird time and a weird server and just play a mission and don't invite anybody and hope that nobody randomly joins, but you can't really control it. Sometimes they just do anyway, and it kind of pisses me off when I get stupid teammates. Uh, I don't like getting stupid teammates because they die and screw up the mission because it kind of scales the difficulty. And I also don't like getting teammates that are so much better than me, they just run ahead and murder everything, and I spend the entire game just kind of following in their path of destruction. Not very fun. Uh, again, I still think that the social elements overall are good, but there are definitely some bad elements to it. There's some things that could totally go wrong, and I would like to have private lobbies or like solo missions or stuff. That would make my life a lot easier. And now we're moving down to the very last little bit. Time to talk about the ugly. The ugly section's a little bit smaller, but I save it that way because there's only so many truly ugly things about any given game. Ugly number one, my biggest ugly is that it's 30 FPS. I, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of spoiled. I've been playing games that are mostly 60 FPS for a long time or more on PC. And while there are some great games that run at 30 FPS, some people will say there's some great games at 24 FPS. I disagree. Uh, I can definitely kind of feel this. Like, it's been a long time since I was rocking 30 FPS, and maybe back in the day when I was playing Halo or when I didn't know any better, it didn't matter. And a casual gamer, it really might not matter. But for the people that are really used to 60 frames per second, they're going to be able to feel this, and it just it kind of drags the game down a little bit. But that's the price you pay for true 1080p. If you wanted 60 FPS, we'd probably have to drop it down to about 720p. I am going to guess that this game is going to have a ton of DLC and micro DLC and micro transactions and just little things here and there. I actually wouldn't bet on each individual one being very expensive, but just the type of game that it is and the platform that it runs on and the shopability of it and the fact that it's 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 slated for like a 10 year marketing release support cycle update sort of thing. I'm just going to assume there's going to be a lot of downloadable content and micro-downloadable content. A lot of things like this, I don't really care about these things. Uh, some people love this. Some people eat this up and they think it makes their experience better. I really don't. I'm going to say that the total level count is not as large as expected. Bungie released a count of the levels and maps, and I feel stupid. I didn't look it up before reading this commentary. But I remember that the total number, especially in single-player levels, was a lot smaller than I expected. And I'm pretty sure that more are coming DLC post-launch. But the game was marketed as this massive space exploration, entire universe, play all day, every day, and never get bored. 
and if it's just the amount of levels that I've seen announced or, you know, the, the total count, I have a feeling people are going to shred through that pretty quickly and run out of things to do. So I, I really, really hope that they have uh, challenges built in or like a lot of free DLC coming or something like that. And the last ugly thing actually has to do with the player base and not necessarily the game, but this is a new, uh, this is a new IP, this is a new title. This won't launch with the same kind of player base that uh, Call of Duty or Battlefield has or that you know Team Fortress has or that RuneScape or whatever has or something like that. When this game launches, it's going to be entirely dependent on early adopters as to whether or not there's going to be enough people playing and how they play and if it's good, if it's bad, how the community goes. And that, that just has to do with the audience that plays the game, if the marketing works, if it's popular, if it goes bug free. Because you really need a lot of people on a game like this to really make it work. And that's, that's up to you guys, whether or not you want to be in that early adoption group to kind of make this game work. Because I can tell you, if nobody buys it, if nobody plays and hops in, or if it becomes a pretty toxic group pretty fast, the game's going to roll over and die. It's going to be sad. Whereas on the flip side, if a whole ton of people buy it and they're nice, friendly, happy, competitive, whatever, it could very well be a 10-year game, and I don't know which way it's going to go. I'm going to probably buy it, or I, actually, I probably won't buy it. I'll probably beg for a free copy, like a download code or something. But who knows? That is my destiny, good, bad, and ugly. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something about the game that you didn't know before, and I hope that I was able to make you a more uh, informed consumer so that you can make a wise decision later on. That's all for this, and I am headed off to Gamescom. Drifter out.